So we're going to do a tier list of all 15 decks in Bellatro based on how successful they are in Gold Stake and how easy they are to complete Gold Stake in. As far as my qualifications, I have successfully completed all 15 decks on Gold Stake, some of them multiple times, and feel as though I have a pretty good understanding of how to play at least most of them reasonably well. So we're going to just place them in the appropriate spots, talk about why they're in that spot, and then everybody in the comments and chat can yell at me because tier lists are inherently very divisive. First up is Abandoned Deck. This might be controversial, but I think it just goes straight to S tier. My god. So the benefits of Abandoned Deck are obviously that um, you can get Ride the Bus early and scale it up without any concern, but that doesn't happen every time. Obviously, there's the downside of not having face cards. That means it's harder to get chip values. It's harder to get points. It can struggle a little bit to go one hand and done in the first couple of rounds, which is important for like actually getting a good Joker early. But it does have a better capacity to make straights than any other deck, and it does more reliably actually hit your three of a kind, your full houses, even your four of a kind, just because of the condensed nature of the deck, you have a higher probability of hitting, you know, an early full house, which can get you out of those early rounds very quickly. Overall, I think it's just a really, really good deck. Deck thinning is something that you spend a lot of time and money on in your typical runs, and abandoned deck just does it for you. The Anal Gif. This one is probably going to be rated lower than it deserves simply because of my playstyle. I do not skip a lot, especially on higher stakes. I am very frequently just taking rounds, just trying to scale up my jokers. Getting an early scaling joker is very, very important, it feels like, for winning a run and matching the scaling of the increased blinds. So skipping is not something that I'm often inclined to do. I have to have a good reason to skip, whether it's a hologram or just like a really appealing option. Some of your best skips are also on anti one where you're looking for the free shop or some early jokers. My last run with this deck, I just ended the run with all of my double tags in hand still. I didn't use them a single time just because I didn't have the opportunity. So it was basically like I was just playing a very vanilla deck. I think it's C for me. It's probably a little bit higher for most people that um, maybe are more better inclined to make use of the skips. There are definitely opportunities where if it hits, it hits really, really big. You can get a lot of money. You can get a lot of hand size to clear a boss that you otherwise wouldn't, but it's not terribly reliable just because of both the timing of the skips and the fact that you might not get offered something worth skipping. So, I mean, C tier, it's like a competent deck. It, it's not actively hurting you. Unlike black deck, which is an easy D tier for me. This one, of all of the decks, it's the one that took me the, the longest to, to beat on Gold Stake. I was just like, it felt like bashing my head into a wall for a bit. The minus one hand per round is really bad when you're low on discards because you can't make a good hand. It's bad because you have a hard time scoring, so you just kind of die a lot of times. It's bad because you have a hard time scaling because you don't have enough hands to play to actually scale those jokers, things like green joker, ride the bus, whatever the space one is. A lot of jokers want you to take extra or play extra hands and you just don't have the capacity to do so with a black joker. And then on top of that, hands are also econ. If you can get in and out of a round quickly, especially early, you get money out of that, which allows you to buy jokers, which allows you to get strength, which allows you to leverage that strength into more econ on the back of those extra hands. And it's really, really difficult to get a black deck run even out of the first ante on uh, gold stake just because of all of those factors playing against one another. Now, once you get it off the ground and you get to take advantage of those extra jokers, maybe you're in a better spot than you would be, but like getting to those later antes is so difficult because of just out the gate, you're at such a disadvantage. All right, blue deck, the old reliable standard option. I think this one is S tier for me. This is maybe my personal favorite deck. This is doing the exact opposite of what the negatives were for, for black deck. More hands means more chances at getting out of a, a round so that you don't die. It means more time to scale your your scaling jokers, which I think are a critical aspect of gold stake runs in my experience. And it's money. Money good. Money gives you strength. Money feels good. I like money. Money me now. And that's what blue deck does. So again, based on my playstyle, kind of other people might rate blue deck a little bit lower and um, the anaglyph higher, but this is 
what I've had success with and what I feel in terms of uh, the strengths of these decks. All right, checkered deck. This one might be a little bit controversial, but uh, it might be the easiest like first deck to beat a gold stake run with, but I don't think it's very reliable just because early on you're blowing through the rounds because you're just playing flush after flush. But like flushes don't scale well into later antis, especially on higher stakes. They don't keep up with the increased scaling of higher antis and it falls off really quickly. If you don't hit something to multiply your flushes, you need something like a card sharp or the dedicated flush option, you're not going to score enough points to keep up with the increased anti-scaling. So you either need to you know, build your deck in such a way that you can get reliable straight flushes or leverage the strength that you have early from checkered deck to transition into something, a different build that doesn't involve flushes entirely. I, I just think flushes are very, very strong and very quick for lower stake runs. But as you start increasing the, the stakes, the scaling does not match some of the other hands that you can uh, play towards. And so flushes really start to fall off. Next up, we have Erratic deck. And Erratic is hit or miss, but I think it's a very, very strong deck. It has a lot of the same advantages that, that Abandoned deck has, with the downside of being a little bit less reliable. So even though it's not actually a smaller deck, because things get so condensed, you can have multiple copies of the same cards, you can actually build hands pretty reliably to get out of those early rounds, to actually give yourself direction in a way that you can choose jokers that, or start looking for jokers that complement it, or start building towards hands that complement it in a way that's maybe a little bit RNG dependent, but still, still quite good. So I'm a big fan of Erratic deck, I think, you know, if you get a good hit, it's probably S tier. If you get a bad hit, it's B tier. So probably just right in the middle of that and it's A tier. I think it's a good solid deck, even if you hit low numbers and a lot of them, that's still kind of a high roll, right? You can make straights easier. You can make your full houses and uh, four of a kinds a lot easier. Next up is Ghost deck, which I think is maybe our first B tier. I don't know, it's kind of on the fringe for me here. It's very similar to Erratic deck where the highs are pretty high. If you get a really good shop one joker that you really want to commit to the, for the rest of your run, you polychrome it, you're in business, you have your direction, you have your point scoring, you're completely set. But if you whiff, you're basically just playing an early anaglyph deck without actually taking advantage of those double tags, right? You're not getting any benefit if you, if you whiff. Or you might be in a situation where in order to get value off of the polychrome, you have to sell your original Joker, which makes you weaker in the short term and you maybe lose the run as a result of that. So I think that there are definitely high highs, but also quite low lows if you don't hit big on early Jokers. I think the first shop is already one of the most important shops in a gold stake run, but it is like absolutely crucial for the ghost deck as well as even the black deck. Because if, if you get a decent Joker off a of black deck, you might be cruising. Same thing here, but um, because you're kind of committing to it with the Spectral card, you really need something good early. All right, next up is Green deck, which I think probably joins Ghost deck in B tier. Obviously, there's a little bit of a, like an adjustment that you need to make in order to remember that you don't actually accumulate interest, but you do have the potential at least, especially if you get strong early or get good scaling early, you can actually really get a good econ engine going with the bonus money from the extra hands, from the available discards, if maybe you're going into a green joker type build. So you can actually leverage this for a pretty good econ system, even if you're not generating interest. It also incentivizes you to spend, which is something that you kind of need to do, especially early in gold stake runs or you die. So green deck may actually be a good deck to try out early on when you're trying gold stake runs just so that you can get used to the pace of spending that you need to uh, get to with uh, the gold stake runs. Magic deck, probably in a similar boat to these two. The extra fools that you get can help you make up for the fact that you whiff on your joker first shop, right? Whiffing on your joker first second shop in particular can feel really bad because it can leave you kind of stranded for the rest of the anti one or leave you poor for the rest of anti one which is essentially a death sentence so the fools can offset that by allowing you to, to duplicate like a planet card that can actually get you out of the run in a similar way to a joker and still give you long-term value rather than committing to a bad joker early it can also give you molt cards which can help get you out of the round so like there are a lot of benefits to those early fools 
just for that early strength, which is so important for getting a run off the ground. That said, it doesn't have any long-term scaling quite like blue deck does where you get those extra hands or even the condensed version of abandoned deck and erratic deck where you really have that long-term value that allows you to keep a run going in the late game that you're or benefits that you're able to leverage more in the late game. Nebula deck is probably here in C tier. I think it's a reasonably good deck if you're building around like one specific hand. Nebula allows you to reliably level up whatever hand you're building around, which can be beneficial. There's decent scaling from playing the planets early, but like the scaling really falls off late. It's pretty noticeable early when you get your first two planet cards, but like the long-term scaling, you're getting like plus two molt, plus 15 ships. That's something that can be managed by playing like two extra hands on a green joker or you know a couple extra rounds with a, a bus that's not really that noticeable for the cost especially when you consider the increased pack options that start really getting noticeable in the later antis because of the orange stake uh, being applied there so having to spend like 10 or 11 dollars to level up plus two molt just not worth but there there are some benefits to maybe getting a run off the ground especially if you're super focused so it's not necessarily as bad as black deck because it's not like actively detrimental to you like black deck is but it doesn't have as much of an upside as nearly any other deck in the uh in the list so it's definitely below the anaglyph deck for sure painted deck painted deck is plus two hand size this was the the first deck that i actually completed on gold stake just because the plus two hand size offsets the gold stake of negative one hand size so you're almost playing a normal deck just with one less joker you get a negative joker eventually and you're just back to normal it's like gold stake doesn't exist but i think it, it it's really good it gets you quickly through those early rounds which allows you to get early strength which allows you to continue through the round there are some obvious limiting factors to only having four jokers but you can more aggressively jump into spectral packs you can take the uh the negative option when other decks would absolutely ignore it just because you have that additional buffer and you can build towards higher point value hands things like four of a kind uh full houses because you can more reliably hit them you actually have a normal hand of uh, of Bellatro instead of the, the minus one that you normally have from Gold Stake. So being able to offset that is uh, kind of crucial in part uh, to paint a deck. I would probably even place it above the, uh, probably even the checker deck, honestly. I think it's a very, very good deck. You also have the potential to get a whole lot of bonus from uh, Steel Jokers if you're if you're going that route. But again, not every run gets uh, Steel cards, but like just vanilla being able to make hands very good for painted deck. Plasma is definitely A or S for me. It's very very good. Again, I feel like we're falling back on this a lot, but in Gold Stake runs in particular, your early rounds are just absolutely absolutely crucial and i think more than nearly any other deck the plasma deck allows you to quickly get through these rounds just on the nature of how overvalued early chip generators are to get you through anti one with a lot of money and decent jokers continuing on so if you can in particular get like a chip generating joker in shop one you're just kind of cruising for the rest of the run and then you can transition into those big numbers for your molt as you go into the later rounds but you've got that cushion you've got that money rolling over you've got interest accumulating the speed at which plasma can get online and through the first couple of antis makes it a very strong option for uh for gold stake runs we've got red deck i think this is probably bottom of a tier for me in a similar way to how painted deck works the extra discard can almost offset that uh, hand size it does not do as good of a job of it as painted deck because you don't actually have the cards in hand you might be in awkward situations where you have to discard too many or too few cards to not actually make the hand that you're looking for but you do eventually have a better chance at, at making the hands and again especially early that's critical you can find that full house to get you to one and done round one you can get that uh you know that higher flush if you need to go searching for that which gives you money right fewer hands equals more money being able to discard into better hands means fewer hands so red deck is you know still very strong and has again long-term value 
especially if you're building towards maybe harder hands to complete, if you're looking for steel cards, if you're looking for something specific that you want to hold in hand, planet cards or blue seals, whatever the case may be, red deck can give you that extra few cards through your deck to help find it. It's Again, almost like you're operating with a smaller deck, like a banded deck, just uh, through the nature of the discards. Very similarly, I think a uh, yellow deck is just kind of solid. This is one where you actually get benefit from taking the round one fight because you actually get out of that with uh, more money. More Again, more money means more strength, which you can snowball into better jokers and you know find some long-term scaling. It also gives you the opportunity because you can leverage the interest rather than the extra hands, you can take the time, which you often need to scale your jokers a little bit more. So you can play extra hands for your supernova. You can play extra hands for your ride the bus or green joker so that you can get them to a point where they actually make you strong enough to beat the higher scaling antis without really sacrificing all that much from your econ because your econ is so reliant on the interest, which you'll have rolling over pretty early. The extra $10 might seem like a short-term thing, but if you consider the interest and the compounding of the interest, the impact over the course of the game is actually quite large. While you have fewer hands to play early, you're less reliant on those hands being good because of the fact that you can, you know, crutch on the interest that continues rolling over. Zodiac gives you Planet Merchant, the Tarot Merchant, and Overstock. So you see more things in the shop, but they're less likely to be Jokers. Because of the reliance on early Jokers, I think this is actually kind of detrimental early on. If you get the right Jokers that scale well with either Tarot cards or Planet cards, or you have the right build that scales well with those, obviously it could be beneficial long term, but I think early on you're kind of operating at a bit of a hindrance with it, just because, yes, there are more things in the shop, but there are more things that are not jokers in the shop as well. And so getting the run just out of anti one could be a little bit more challenging than some of the other options because you don't have that guaranteed solid joker that you might be looking for to help push you through. So I think it's probably at the bottom of C tier, maybe, you know, arguably, slightly above this. I think it's pretty solidly in C tier. It's a decent deck. It's not actively detrimental. I think the only one that really, really is quite detrimental is black deck just for getting the run online. But short term, it could also be uh, a detriment not to be able to see as many jokers as you might otherwise with the, uh, with the other decks. Challenge deck S tier? Okay, we'll do challenge deck S tier. So that is the Bellatro deck tier list. Again, this was considering gold stake specifically. Let me know down in the comments what you think. If you disagree, I'm sure you'll tell me. If you agree, maybe give the video a thumbs up. I don't know. Thanks for watching, everybody.